Hey you guys, Irene Lyon here and welcome to this video and this vlog today. I want to follow up on one piece of education that I put out in my last vlog, or maybe it was a few vlogs ago, called Why I Cry, Five Reasons I Cry Once a Month, at least once a month. But in that one I talked about the importance of not allowing babies to cry themselves to sleep. And I want to start diving into this education a little deeper because it's really really important and because it's a really big topic and we could spend a month talking about this on a daily vlog I'm gonna start with a small piece of it and it comes down to what a baby is equipped to do when they are born so side note if you've been following me or if you're new to me what you'll start to realize is that I'm all about nervous system health specifically the autonomic nervous system. The autonomic nervous system governs our digestive system, our hormones, our immune system, our dilation of our eyes and our, our um, sweating and <laughs> all the, the pieces that just work without us having to think about them. That's why it's called autonomic. Also means automatic, right? So when you eat something, you don't have to think about your digestion happening. It just happens, at least we hope it does. Same with producing urine. When you have a lot of liquids in your body, you want to pee that out, but you don't have to think about it. Now, the other portion of the autonomic nervous system is our survival responses, specifically our fight, flight, and freeze responses. Now, when a baby is born, they primarily have the part of their autonomic nervous system working that shuts them down, which is the freeze response. And they have a little bit of the sympathetic nervous system, the fight flight, but a brand new baby, if you think about a brand new baby, they really can't fight and they definitely can't get up onto their feet and flee. It takes a long time, a lot of apprenticeship for a human being to be able to walk and run, right? So when they're born, they're fairly simple creatures, and a lot of times people think that, oh, babies don't really do anything, they just kind of sit there, but they're actually doing a lot. They are listening and sensing to this crazy environment that is the world, smells, senses, they're hearing, the tone of their caregivers, their level of safety, so they are taking in so much information, and because of that, we have to ensure that they don't get overstimulated. So when a baby cries, typically it's for a few reasons. They're hungry, they're wet, their diapers are poopy, um, or they're, they're not feeling well. So obviously if a baby is unwell, whether it's a cold or there's something more dramatic going on, they'll whimper, they'll, they'll cry, they'll scream until they get taken care of. One of the things that people think, and this is more old school knowledge, but people still believe it to this day, is that when a child is crying at night that you should leave it to cry itself to sleep because that will teach it how to soothe itself. And here's the thing, it will not teach it how to soothe itself. So when a baby is in distress and crying, crazy crying, and you leave it to soothe itself, it actually isn't soothing itself, it's going into a shutdown response because it has gone too far up on that sympathetic fight flight kind of that nervous energy I don't feel well something's not right I'm in chaos it hits this this threshold at the top where it cannot handle it anymore and then rather than it coming down slowly which is what we want it just shuts off and it goes and it dives into this shutdown response this freeze response of the parasympathetic now I'm gonna put another little sidebar to this and I'll talk about this more in future vlogs, but the nerve that is responsible for that shutdown is called the vagus nerve, the vagus nerve. This is a nerve that's getting a lot of attention right now in the scientific press because we're finding that with a lot of the practices that teach people how to breathe and to calm themselves down, to bring that heart rate down, it's tapping into that vagus nerve. But what isn't often talked about is why do we need to do this at all? Why do we need to, as adult human beings at our age, why do we have to learn how to self-soothe and bring ourselves down? And the reason is because when we were little, if we weren't taught how to self-soothe, 
in relationship, in co-regulation with our primary caregiver. It doesn't have to be a mom, it doesn't have to be a dad, it could be a nanny, a grandma, an auntie. If we don't have that nurturing that teaches us how to come out of our distress slowly, we will default to shut down, right? We will default to just shutting down. And we don't want that because what that does is it doesn't allow a part of our vagus nerve, which is called the ventral vagal portion. I'll talk about that in a second. It's not allowing the more social engagement part that actually helps us come down slowly. It doesn't teach that baby how to do that. So if I go back, baby is born, they come out, they're fresh to the world, they can default to shutting down really quickly. What they can't do is regulate their heart rate and come down slowly. And these two branches, fast and slow, are both governed by the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve, it comes out of our brain stem. So if you put your hand behind there by the base of your brain, there's this nerve, it's this massive nerve, it's the 10th cranial nerve. It's one of the biggest, it is the biggest nerve in the body, and then it goes everywhere. So one branch goes behind the brain stem and it goes below our diaphragm to the guts and to the bladder and to the, and to the reproductive system and all those good, good pieces down below. Okay, so I'll say that again. The back part goes behind the brain stem into the parts below the diaphragm. When we're born, that part is functioning like on fire. That's why babies can poop and they can pee and that is working. Granted, they come full term, right? Preemies are another thing, another vlog. That one's working. And that one is unmyelinated. For those of you science geeks, unmyelinated, unmyelinated means that that nerve is a bit more primitive. It's a bit more quick and clumsy to respond. If you've ever fainted or you've ever seen something that has shocked you and you just shut down um, or you feel a little woozy and then you faint, that's that nerve kicking in. It's shutting your system down to preserve you from the threat that you are either perceiving or actually having um, being given to you. Okay, so that's one portion of this vagus nerve. The other portion comes out of the front of the brain stem and it goes to everything above the diaphragm. The facial muscles, the ear, the um, parts of our mouth that govern our sound, our prosody, our ability to have inflection in our voice up and down, around and deep. The fact that I was just able to do those different things is because of this, partially because of this vagus nerve. The other thing though that this nerve does is it goes directly to our heart and it brings the heart rate down slowly, okay? So I wanna tie this into the babies. The interesting thing is this, this nerve, the front portion, is myelinated. So again, myelinated means that that nerve is gonna be very smart and it's gonna be very refined. It's going to bring ourselves down, it's gonna calm us down in a slow modulated fashion, not in a <laughs> shut down fashion, okay? It's a bit more intelligent, but babies, when they're born, that is not working, not working at all which is why we should not be leaving babies alone to cry and soothe themselves because they have no clue how. And the way they learn it is through co-regulation with a primary caregiver that has that on board already, all right? So bottom line, when babies are born, they're fresh, they're new, they're experiencing so much, and as adults, we need to teach them how to stay in a more calm state, how to regulate them down out of the stimulus. What that does in the long term is it teaches them how to have a healthy nervous system. And in the future, it means they're going to have, and we've studied this in research, um, less depression, less, less anxiety, less addiction, less chronic health problems. So many things are related to not having this healthy vagus nerve parasympathetic, sympathetic balance in the nervous system. I'm gonna keep it there. I just wanna cover that part. I'll dive deeper into future vlogs on this topic, but um, the reason I, I uh, wanted to put this out there is a few days ago I heard someone say to someone else on a live podcast to just walk away from babies when they're crying. And that's wrong information. 
and we need to understand that those little ones, they need our help, they need to learn. It's not going to smarten them up and toughen them up if we leave them to cry. By doing this, by teaching them how to soothe when they're babies, in future they will be able to self-regulate themselves and they won't need drugs and alcohol and tactics to help calm themselves down. They'll just be healthy human beings, which is exactly what we need to breed in our world right now. We need more healthy human beings that don't need to spend an entire lifetime trying to fix themselves because they didn't have that good early beginning. Okay, I'm going to leave it at that. If you're new to me, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, this YouTube channel, channel, please do so. I would really appreciate it. And if you want more information on what I do, I've got lots of freebies over on my website, irenelion.com. Head over there and hopefully we will see you in the future. Take care. Bye for now. Bye.